All right, we'll see how this goes here this morning. I have a handy dandy mic now. And also, I have a little tripod here. All right, so let us, let us jump into Water from the Rock. This is <clears throat> Numbers. <clears throat> this is Numbers chapter 20. And I'm going to read. And I'm going to tie this in with the rapture. So stay tuned. Stick around. Watch this video to the end. You're not going to want to miss this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're going by leaps and bounds. It's actually been amazing in the last week or so. Um, and yeah, don't forget to leave a comment. I do not delete comments because I believe in freedom of speech. I believe everybody has a chance to say what's on their mind. Whether you believe me, don't believe me, it's up to you. You just leave a comment. All right. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and the people chose with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made unto us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? There is no place of seed, of figs, or of vine, or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, Thou and Aaron, thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, that it shall give forth his water. Interesting. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Now, I believe the book of Hebrews talks about this being Christ, the Messiah. A type of Christ, if you will. It's interesting. I don't know how else you can look at that. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord and he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with them, strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. And just before this, Miriam died. So now Moses can't go into the promised land, neither can Aaron. So then we go over to the New Testament funny Moses begged God when he finally did see the promised land he begged God to let him to go in to the point where God said enough already don't talk to me about this matter anymore that tells you how bad Moses wanted to get into the promised land he wanted to see all of God's glory and all the fulfillment you know eating um, milk or drinking milk and honey and eating the fat of the lamb all this kind of fat of the land all this kind of stuff so it's kind of interesting that Moses wanted to come into the promised land then we get to John 19 this is Jesus dying on the cross 
After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel of full, full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hesop and put it into his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. This is where Jesus Christ tasted death for us. You want to know what death tastes like? It tastes like this right here. Jesus tasted death for us. As a Christian, we do not have to taste death. We do not have to fear death. One day we're going to die. Our body is going to die, going to keel over, and we're going to get buried in the ground. But we don't have to taste death. Jesus Christ tasted death for us. Why? To allow us to be translated into his kingdom, into heaven, to be with Jesus forever and ever. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not repain, remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was on an high day, he saw Pilate that the legs might be broken and they, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. Which is interesting because the two thieves on the cross were not dead yet. So the Roman soldiers broke one guy's legs, then they died, and broke the other guy's legs so that he died. Horrible, horrible deaths. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break down his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, struck him in the side probably around the fifth rib, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he saw that it, and it, and he saw that it bare 